I won't deny it. I'm a South Sider. You don't want to mess with me. Got the police rushing at me. But they can't do nothing to an attorney. Said she won't deny it. She's a North Sider. You don't want to mess with her. Got the police rushing at her. But they can't do nothing to a shamanic healer. Said she won't deny it. She's a South Sider. You don't want to mess with her. Got the police rushing at her. But they can't do nothing to break the silence, director. Hey, 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 it's Sunday. Tomorrow's Monday. Gotta have fun before the next work day. Facts. We gon' party like it's Santa's birthday. Because we need to have this conversation in the worst way. Don't be thirsty. Just sit back and stay for a little while. Let's talk about all the problems and the bullshit with our child <laughs> or whatever <laughs> birds of a feather fly together hello everyone out there i'm brian tierney this is the blessed life university podcast the blue podcast for short uh with me today is tilsa d fernandez she's a teamster pension fund analyst she is the founder and owner of divine yoni goddess divine wedding vows and co-host of the cafecito con las chingonas podcast she is a mother of seven beautiful children. Also with me is Sandra Diaz. She's the current operations uh, director of operations with Team Luis Ortiz uh, at Remax Partners in Berlin. I know Sandra's busy because Team Ortiz is one of the busiest, busiest Hispanic real estate um, teams in Illinois and in the country. So they got their hands pretty full, working hard. Uh, Sandra... Let's see here, what do we got? Um, she has worked in banking for 17 years, helping people in the industry and the community. She is an advocate for fair housing and community building, and she is the current chairwoman of the Break the Silence Foundation, which is uh, one of the things she's here to speak with us about today. So, Sandra, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for inviting me on your podcast. This is cool. <laughs> I'm glad you did. You guys right? almost got a full podcast in before we even started recording. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's going to be, I might do that as like a little separate episode, like behind the scenes, Blue yeah. Podcast 21 or something like that. It'll, I think it'll you help should me. just include it. <laughs> I might. We had a pre-episode. <laughs> Pre-episode, which I can edit too. If there's certain things that you've said that you don't want to be in there, I can always. Get we rid can of those. definitely take out a chunk. <laughs> That's no, the... but thank you even for this connection because I I could feel her energy and I I love it. It's very positive. Absolutely, I, I feel it. Likewise, yeah. Thanks, yeah, Brian. well, no doubt about it. Um, that's one of the cool things about um, this podcast, and this is a theme in my life in general, is just bringing people together, and that's what this podcast does. It allows me to learn, to grow, to teach, and to get all those things from people, too, and then share that with the listeners. And I learned some things about you right now that I didn't know either. I mean, you guys have a lot in line with, um, like, the healing type of thing and these affirmations and, and all this, and I didn't realize that uh, you were kind of on that level, too, so good great stuff um you guys make me better her her um you know the i guess team ortiz team lewis ortiz we were trading books and he gave me john maxwell's leadership book and i, I read that almost every day or i at least have to catch up when i miss a day you know <laughs> you then i'm like getting extra it. lessons you know it's like i'm eating the large sunday instead of the small one you know <laughs> well you never know where you're gonna catch a pop quiz when you walk into the office did you read it oh well, yes. sometimes I send it to them. I'll send them like the picture of the, of the uh, you know the lesson for the day. Just let them know that I've been keeping my mind on it. <laughs> and if you put that on your like Facebook too, people really like that. I'm like this is what I this is the leadership that I got today. Nice. So it's important to surround yourself with people who are consistently learning. You know, mm -hmm. books are important. Don't yeah. trust people that don't read. <laughs> oh, and you know what? Happy Women's Month. App. High five, hey. chingona. <laughs> <laughs> high five. <laughs> he was birthed out of a woman, so high five. <laughs> yeah. high, fi high five to your mom. <laughs> Love you, ma. <laughs> so, Women's Month, I didn't even know. I didn't know that they didn't really, they didn't make that loud and clear that March was Women's Month. Yeah, oh, that's good. Women's International Day is March 8th. Oh, shit. That's coming up soon. Yes. El Dia de Nosotras. Yes, hey. ma'am. <laughs> so um you came to tell us about the break the silence foundation 
Yes. What uh, What is it that they do? Well, um, I I was fortunate enough to be given the opportunity to represent the uh, organization, uh, Break the Science Foundation, which was founded by uh, this beautiful, amazing, loving, caring woman named Maribel Garcia. She founded uh, Break the Silence in 2005 with her husband, David. And uh, they've been on a quest to help other women um, who have found themselves in very bad situations. And, uh, but you know, what, what I learned from them, which what made me find the organization intriguing, was that it's not just about, uh, domestic violence is not just about women, but it's also about the children, mm -hmm. and it's also about males, because males also go through domestic violence. So this organization does not only go out to uh, bring out awareness to violence against women, but just violence in the family in general, because they've uh, I've met a, a family who they were able to help keep together. Um, through therapy and through uh, family therapy because even the children went through um, a, a lot of talks that they had to go through but you could tell the family is grateful um, for that but she I, I feel like she was uh, struggling a little bit to find a a solid place to be at and they were given a place in Berwyn actually it's right on uh, Cermak and Euclid um, in Berwyn is right next to the BMO Harris and so what we've been doing for the past year is just bringing more awareness to the foundation um, so that we're able to help other uh, women and families um, who are going through the struggle especially like during COVID yeah. man yeah. those those calls spiked up um, the police department you know they gave us their numbers on how many calls and how many incidents they've had and how that became a pandemic in itself mm-hmm Right. You know, so uh, we did our, uh, last year we had a Burberry event, for the Burberry downtown. They closed the whole location to give us the opportunity um, to fundraise there. We had our first annual walk for Break the Silence in Berwyn, and then we also did a Break the Silence night where we were supposed to do a gala. They have a gala every year. And uh, because of the pandemic, we weren't able to uh, organize an event. And I'm like, we got to do something. We, you know, <laughs> we have to still bring this awareness and we have to find other people that are willing to help us help other people. And so we held this event. And after that, um, we, you know, some of the survivors um, were willing to be there. Break the Silence also has, is, is part of this um, other organization. It's called Face to Face. So they, uh, it's a group of physicians uh, that will, sorry, I just blinked out right now. Well, they, they help <laughs> with people who've been through domestic violence, the physicians? Very, very bad domestic violence. They will reconstruct the faces. Oh, my God. Uh, These the faces. are like severe cases of, yeah. Yeah, so we've had a few ladies that actually were willing to come up. And, you know, I get emotional with this because when you, once you hear the stories, uh, you know, when you speak, that's why sometimes I blink out because I just, I get in the thought of the story that I know. And so, but a lot of people were touched that day. And so Mayor Lavero and then Gail, um, his wife, um, she was just so, you know, I don't know. She, something came over here where she's like over her that she was just like, I need to help. I need to help. And so with that, um, we were able to organize a love purse drive. And I don't know if you've heard of love purse. No. That's with Maria Castro. So what she does is um, she started collecting, what she did was starting to collect bags, right, with toiletries for females. Right. But she said that when she would give these bags to other females, she felt so bad that it was just like a, she was giving it to them in a garbage bag. Yeah. So what she did was ordered purses. Just like, you know, pur like $20 purses, not like, not like expensive purses, but just as a reminder, like here, here's a love for someone loves you mm -hmm. and I'm giving all of this to you with uh, with a lot of love. Yeah. And it's so meaningful when you're going through um, a situation or domestic violence to kind of feel that warmth of being supported, because if there's anything 
of being a victim is like you feel like you're left alone. So to have something like that during the most difficult time of your life is just, you know, honestly, like that's where your healing begins, you know. So you guys do amazing at, you know, obviously connecting those little dots. And yeah, I mean, it. it's one thing to give someone a, you know, you need this in a garbage bag. You know, it doesn't feel right. Even to the give, the person giving it doesn't yeah. feel right. So to add that little touch of a purse, like that's so beautiful. Yeah, so we were able to do that. We and we we looked out for the community help and we collected over 200 purses. Wow. Yeah, with toiletries inside of them already. And uh, we had that party at our uh, Paisans. We ended the drive at a uh, Paisans who were generous enough to um, sponsor that event. So nice. it was amazing. And so like now we're looking to um, renovate the location because they get together on Tuesday, the survivors, they support each other very much. It's a great, um, it's nice to see how other women, you know, help each other get through the toughest of times. But um, yeah, we have that location right now and we're renovating. So we're currently looking for support in that area. You know, people that wanna help with uh, materials or work or just anything. Nice. So do you guys help house the victims or how does it work? Well, at this moment, we don't have a shelter. That's something that we have um, in, in the works, in, the, okay. in our plans. But right now, uh, we reach out to our sister organizations, you know, okay. so we have, um, because we believe in that a lot too, you know, have to collaborate with each other in order to be able to help as many as we can. Sarah's Inn um, is who we direct them to if they need housing. Say that one more time. Sarah's Inn. Sarah's Inn. Yes. Where is that at? They're in uh, Forest Park. Okay. I was yes. just there yesterday for the St. Patrick's Day Parade. It was a great time, but that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome to have it there in Forest Park. Yeah, they're really, they're great people. They also have a lot of uh, workshops for teenagers. I think last month was the um, uh, teen dating month. Nice. Yeah, so they do workshops for that. So hopefully we'll be working with them a lot more and getting to our youth because uh, we have a representative from, like, the school, like the school council, mm -hmm. the student Council, and they were talking a lot about um, they would like some workshops. Yeah, that's amazing. So you started, or well, let me back up. I like to talk quick, but the problem is you got to slow down and think about what you're about to say. So, <laughs> break the silence was formed back in 2005. Yes, and that arose from someone who had experienced themselves with domestic violence. Yes, actually, her story is really wrong it's um she went through it at home and she was actually being abused by her father and so she later on in life how life is right she has to end up taking care of her dad and so she speak when she speaks about how she forgave him mm -hmm. and the power of forgiveness i mean this just gives you chills uh it, it, i get chills every single time that i think about it i try not to think about it because that's her story right but just to think about her being able to forgive and everything that she had to go through because it was years of abuse of your own parent um and for her to forgive it's kind of uh it's powerful. It's it, yeah. it, it is powerful. But for her to even, you know, she counsels people one-on-one. -on -one and she hears everybody else's story. And it's hard not to hate uh, someone that has hurt you that right. bad. And, and then to counsel other people and hear their stories and help them through their healing process and their forgiving process, too. I mean, it takes a lot. That's why when I met her, I'm like, I, we, we have to help her. Uh, we have to do something to help other other women, and you know, after when we did the event at Paisans, uh, there was a girl that came up to me and she said, "Thank you so much for 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 doing this because she has she's like I have a sister, and my sister was in domestic violence. Um, her boyfriend beat her and left her paralyzed, half uh, half of her body's paralyzed." 
And so now the whole family's taking care of her. But we still, but she's alive. So we still want her to find a way to be happy. And, and not only in domestic violence situations is the victim a victim, but so is the family. Because yeah. your mom, you know, your mom's going to be upset if you're going through it. Your right. sister is upset. So, um, yeah. So that's what we're looking to, to do, to just give people that support and people that are supporting other people that support. Because sometimes you know that someone that you know, like a friend or a family member is going through it. And what do you do? Especially yeah. if they don't want to leave. Yeah, it's very, very difficult, but like you said, the support is what really matters, and you kind of have to get to that point where you really want to leave, and it's it's a journey. It's a journey. I feel like counseling therapy is not something that is readily available for everyone unless you have insurance. Otherwise, you are shipped over to like centers, free centers um, that are overbooked overload with cases so to have like a team of doctors or therapists that can kind of help you know of course they have their own system but help outside of that I mean something that's it's it's a never-ending um plague domestic violence is not a joke at all and um Mm. the support I don't feel like there's ever enough support you know no it's um actually that's some that, that's something that we spoke about when we spoke with like sarah's you know sarah's in and there's some other um groups too that are out there um trying to give as much help as they possibly can and it's kind of like oh my gosh like but you always have to find a way to help them out even if you have to reach out to someone that owns a hotel right. you know to lend a room for the night until we figure out you know if they have a family member where they can go to it's um, that's the biggest honestly that's the biggest struggle for someone that i went through it um is how do you restart you know that's the diff- that's the biggest most difficult task if you don't have the financial funds like how you know actually um I'm working on a, a handbook with um, his co-host, <laughs> Kimmy. Kimmy. Yeah. You guys already started on that? Yeah. It's a project that we're going to be working on together, but um, kind of like how do you get started? And it's like you have to get yourself a separate bank account. And how do you do that without alerting your significant other, like planning up to that? And there's not enough. Uh, I would say housing is something that's very important and it's like when you get out of a situation do you really want to go to a shelter a lot of women don't want that because it's an unknown you know what i mean right especially when you have children right when you have children yeah like i i didn't honestly i didn't feel like a shelter was appropriate for you know well my household's a lot bigger obviously i don't have one or two kids i have seven you know a whole you know team um But that is, I would say, like a lot of my friends that are going through it, I have two that are going through it right now, and finances, where do I live, and then accessibility to these programs, because even if you do find a shelter or housing, it's never in your neighborhood. And I feel like that's something that we should have um, more access to as a community, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, and not necessarily being dumped in a shelter where it's just like a free for all. Safe houses in your community so that, you know, when your kids are enrolled in school there, you're not traveling like neighborhoods away to try to get them to school. Yeah, which is another problem. Exactly. That's another problem. And then if you're going through a custody battle, like how do you even look how do, how do you even present this to the judge you know immediately whoever the victim is it's like well you don't even have a stable place of course because you went through this whole big you know <laughs> yeah issue <laughs> and you can't stay where you're supposed to stay you know so it it's a multi-layer problem well you know that brings me to the part about how domestic violence has like it doesn't discriminate with anyone oh no with anyone because um, there's many uh, forms of abuse, mm-hmm. right? And one of the ones that I've been finding a lot lately have been, like, the financial abuse. Yes. So you'll have, like, females that have decided to give up their lives to raise a family, mm-hmm. but then where's her um, savings account? You're stuck. Where's... You're stuck at his mercy. Yes. Yeah. Or sometimes you, or sometimes you don't even know because you have, like, these, these, 
you know, people who you look at strong, females, they're working, they have their own money, but they still don't have control over their own finances. Someone else is controlling their Right. Or that other person is like, well, I don't have money this month, and they're consistently using you as a bank account. So even if you're bossed up, even if you have, you know, a well, a good career, it's like you still don't even have enough to build a savings a man needs to have a bank account too and he should when he's got a a, a wife and kids or a, yeah a i feel baby's like he's mama and kids absolutely I, mean? I feel like there should be no i don't want no scrubs right you gotta do this <laughs> old school shit you gotta keep it old school when you're dealing with some old ass problems right <laughs> this shit's been a problem since fucking the beginning of time yeah. you don't think freaking adam was borrowing fucking apples out of eve's basket you got another thing coming lazy fuck he's sitting over there looking good the whole day she's out there gathering apples Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fucking guy needs to get up there and get to work. Stand up and work, guy. <laughs> ain't good to them sitting there. Well, sometimes they work too, but they are, they like to spend so much money because they're too busy keeping up with all of their friends and eating out all the time. And they next thing you know, their payday is on a Friday. And by Wednesday, they don't have money. It's like, can you transfer me some money? And next thing you know, you're like out of your own money. So like the way I had to do it was like I had to create my second account We had a joint, always have a joint where all the bills go (laughs) and have your side money. uh, Make sure that you go, you, you open it from a different email address that you only have access to and start getting a new Gmail. (laughs) Stay tuned for the workbook. And another thing is avoid joint credit for Christ's sake. If the guy was a fucking loser back then, he's going to ruin your credit when you got joint credit together for Christ's sake. You, you don't want this to haunt you forever. Financial exploitation, like that is on the top tier. They yes. never want you to do too much because they're fearful that you might leave them. So that's when they start extracting like, oh, my God, my car needs this. Mm-hmm. And oh, my God, I don't have money. Like you just have to put your foot down like, oh, my God, I don't have it either. And try not to work too much overtime because you're you're working too much. So oh he's going to know you have money. <laughs> Same broke ass <laughs> excuse again. <laughs> Fucking good. I, it's easier said than done. I heard when, you're, shit times. when you're in the situation <laughs> and you have kids together, it's a, it plays out way different. It's funny now, but in retrospect, <laughs> I, I was working like 70, sometimes 80 hours a week for what? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Once you, you start looking back. Once you, yeah, once I start looking back, I'm like, oh, my God. You're like, man, I would have had two houses already. Well, my mom always says that. My mom is always like, bitch, you know, if you would have listened to me, I'm like, I don't need money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here now. That's yeah, true. but, I mean, that's the, and that's the thing, you know, like, the importance of education, yes. right, and giving resources because I, I believe a lot right now, especially right now, uh, workshops in financing, mm-hmm. right? No, um, you know, a, one of the things that Lewis does to us every Wednesday is Wealth Wednesday. So we have to go over finances, personal budgeting, and you, um, you know, you have to have that account for like a, like a safety net. I still you know? need help with that. <laughs> and it's, uh, once you yeah. start, and sometimes you know what, you don't want to look at your finances because you're scared because you know what you're doing and you're mm-hmm. not supposed to do. Um, but once you, you sit down and you write it all down and you look at it, you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's just like. Louis yeah. Purse. Here's a new <laughs> Louis Purse. Some people have addiction to chocolate. Some people have an addiction to gambling or drugs. But some people have Louis bag addiction. I don't have a Louis bag. Don't look at my bag. No, okay? we, weren't, we weren't like, you know, hating on you or freaking looking in your background. <laughs> It could be Gucci, Louis, Tommy, Vinny, Gucci, whatever you know. Crystals, <laughs> crystals, <laughs> crystals, essential oils, saged in different form. <laughs> yeah, but I, um, you know, I hope that uh, anybody that's listening, that if you're going through something, you know, don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, don't be afraid Amen. to to even call. Uh, there's a national domestic uh, violence hotline. It's, 800-799-SAFE, which is 800-799-7233. One more time slowly. 1-800-799-7233. And um, there's always someone uh, willing to help. Uh, We are located in Berwyn. I will give you my information um, in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But we we are there. We're there to listen. 
And uh, like I said, Maribel is a, is a great person. At the moment, our location is not open, but they are meeting. And those things sometimes are very private because it's, it's really hard when a person's going through domestic violence. You don't want a person to know where you're going. Right. You know, and uh, I've learned a lot. Um, I mean, I've gone through domestic violence before in my past, and um, sometimes you feel like you can't start over, right? We felt like mm-hmm. that before, but you can start over. There's hope, and, right. um, you know, just just know that you don't have to be living that way. Not only you, but your children um, deserve to have a good life. Exactly. I think that's a... Uh it should be the greatest motivator for moms. It doesn't matter if you have one kid, two, three, four, five. Shit, you could have seven like me. You could still start from zero. Um, and starting from the ground up is better. Once you hit rock bottom, there's no other place but to go up That's after true. that. So whether or not the finances look good, and I would say this publicly, I started from nothing, just mattresses on my floor three and a half years ago. And a lot of people just, one, the embarrassing, you don't want to talk about it. You mm-hmm. don't want your friends to look at you any differently, you know, because, you know, we all have our persona that we're chingonas, but chingonas go through things, you know, behind closed doors and those beautiful family picture perfect Facebook uh, pictures may not always be like that <laughs> behind closed doors yep. and perceiving or, or just constantly making things look something that they're not. It's a lot of effort to keep up with that. Um, and it's re- I, I would say like, you know, kudos to everyone who has, but we don't talk about it enough. So I think that this is really good to start talking about it because you'll have really successful women like yourself and a lot of times women who are going through it, they're like, oh, this is just something that women like myself go through, not successful women, not. And it's not true. It doesn't discriminate. It could happen. But you can be at that lower vibing part of your life. But you could also be someone amazing once you leave that situation, like your path opens up. Yeah, because then you can do whatever you want. Exactly. <laughs> well, it's true. And, you know, like freedom is, is there to be taken. A lot of the time you might not see it. But um, if people have survived this long, if people have overcome many different adversities, it's possible for the victims as well. And I just hope that they see that and just know that there is help out there because when you have a problem that you can't overcome yourself, you do need help. And recognizing that you have a problem and then getting the help you need and then taking that step toward freedom because, you know, it's one of those things where if you work at it, you know, you, you'll probably get what you want if you work at it long enough. And right. it's just a process. And I think that's the one of the things that we need to really instill in, uh, in our children is that, you know, everything in life takes work. And it, it doesn't have to be super hard work all the time, but consistent work, you know, to stay in touch with things, to move it along and keep, keep the wheel spinning and all this stuff. So you said that Break the Silence formed 2005. And when they started you know, their mission is helping victims of domestic violence. And in, in what ways do they do this? Is it donations of goods and money? Or is it helping with connecting them with shelter or providing meetings where they can discuss their problems and try to get strategies help? All of the above. Tell us about it. Yeah, it's all of the above. Uh, Maribel, she, like I said, she deals a lot with the cases like one-on-one. And she has a lot of more like private funds because that way you're not like um, limited to some of the things that you're willing to do. Because I mean, that job, willing to help someone going through that, I mean, is is different forms. And so so she uh, counsels them and she also goes with women to uh, fill out like those, uh, what do they call them? Restraining orders? The restraining orders. She'll go with them to the court. She'll go through even when they're going through the, the divorce filings. I mean, because it's a, a whole long process. Um, it is. When it's you're a... going through that. And it depends on, you know, if there's assets involved, if there's money involved, if obviously the, if the children are involved. And it helps to have that moral support there with you, I'm sure, because if you yeah. end up seeing your partner there in court and they're, like, they're trying to, like, be rude out in the hallway or something, you have somebody there to kind of keep you focused and keep you you know courageous and and also to go through all that paperwork i know as an attorney too like 
it's intimidating to me. Like, there's a million dumbass pieces of paperwork. They all have to be filed properly. Otherwise, you have mm-hmm. to redo it. It slows you down. Yeah. And, you know, which is another thing, like, that we, uh, that we stress a lot on. You have to document everything that happens to you. Right. Even if you're not ready to leave um, a situation, you have to be able to confine someone. Right now, we're looking into... Um, there's some apps. We just want to make sure that those apps are really protected, um, you know, because you're able to. Um, there's one that's called Document the Abuse, and you can upload like pictures, um, any letters, uh, screenshots of text messages, you know, that'll save everything like a file almost. You do need that, absolutely. You know, and keep docu- a journal of. I think the app is. I think the app is really good, to be honest. um, Especially text messages, because a lot of times what they do is they'll get into your phone and delete those horrible text messaging back and forth because they don't want to look like, you know, they don't want a history of the abuse in writing. And there's also. Continue on with that. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. (laughs) Say it. (laughs) No, it's. uh, There's also apps for you to. Um, kind of download all of the text messaging back and forth so you could present that in court. Mm-hmm. Uh, like it puts it in like a transcript format. Yes, almost, yeah. so you could give it to the judge. Um, and yeah, I think the, the app is, honestly, it is extremely important. I didn't know there was an app called yeah, Document I mean, the Abuse. It, well, I think what they're attempting to do is not make it like a like an app, but it's somewhere mm-hmm. they can go and document. It's like one like of those cloud. apps it's yeah. like an it's all app saved that does so they yeah. can't delete it because it's saved in a car. Right, and you yeah. can give someone the power of attorney to like if something Access were to happen it if to you. You're missing or right, and the person that's um, actually um, um, that's on the forefront of this is Norma Peterson, who is a sister-in-law of Stacy Peterson. Um, oh. That um, person from Bowling, uh, you know that um, Drew Peterson, Drew Peterson the yeah. police uh, officer at one time Bolingbrook. who is most likely guilty of the murder of two wives um one was just never found and the other one was examined after and, and after examining it and knowing that the second wife met, went missing was ruled a murder yeah crazy story during our our lifetimes I and mean, it was sad i remember being working younger and they would wear stacy peterson there was people used to wear uh put that bumper sticker on their car and then yeah. the windows where is stacy help us find stacy yeah so norma who's a sister-in-law the the brothers just a little background on the Drew Peterson thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, I mean, I was, uh, I, I met with Norma Peterson and she was actually, she's been to our events nice. uh, because for her it's, in, it's important and she's a big reminder of how you're supposed to document everything that happens to you because you, you never know and you just want to make sure that someone knows, you know, what's been, what's been going on and that will help prosecute um, someone faster and it'll just be a help, you know, like the whole case Overall, if something were to happen, you know, extreme, yeah, Lord forbid yeah. the worst. Yeah, yeah, I, that's amazing that you know that uh, app because it's one of the most important videos, um, recordings. I'm sure in the state of Illinois, there has to be a two party consent, right? For recording. Yeah, for recording. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Unless it's. There might be some exceptions in, in terms of, like, if you're in public, like if you're in a public place, you know, so if you meet them at a Starbucks or something, you know, you, you might be able to record that. But I, I've never had to deal with that type of law enough. But, it, yeah, it is a, it's a it's both people have to consent to be recorded in Illinois. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and this sort of task force that's going on, too, you know, like I said, like, you know, it's been a year since I've had this opportunity and I've been able to learn more about how even um, there's people on – you know, and Congress is still trying to work on passing some laws that will protect um, victims more. Uh, I was able to meet with Cassandra Miller, her, um, you know, um, her ex-husband. Um, he murdered a two-year-old son. And so she said that she was asking for help, constantly asking mm-hmm. uh, the police for help. And that has even, you know, that's changing the way that police are responding to certain calls and situations, like a follow-up. Like, okay, so she called, this happened, what happened to this person? What happened to that family? What's going on with these kids? 
And so they want to make sure that they they get a follow they do follow ups with the families, and they just passed um, Colton's task force in kind of helping change those things around. Colton's task force is yeah, it's a bill that was passed in order to help um, change the way that. Uh, response is given to these type of cases. Okay. Yeah. For domestic violence. Cases. For domestic violence, yeah. So it didn't become a law yet, or is sh- it, it's in the bill stage? No, no. I, actually, okay. it, it became. Oh, okay. Yeah, it passed. Nice. Okay. Yeah, so I know that they're working on that. I still got to follow up. But right now, with uh, Break the Science Foundation, we want to just, since we already have our location, we want to rehab it because it's there but it needs to be revamped you know we don't want to feel um people when the the women that come in that they're just going into just any place we want it to be a beautiful place a place where they can feel you know that peace they feel safe um so that's what we're working on so we're looking for sponsorships right now Uh, we're looking for that type of help fundraising a lot right now and hopefully once we open then we'll have um psychologists on site uh, we'll have more workshops, and and we'll you know I'm, I look forward to next time I come on and to speak about break the signs. So we'll have the location ready, up and running, and we'll be able to help a lot more people that way. When is your target for that? We our target is for me, end of May. Okay, well I mean that's that'll be here before you know it. Yeah. So that's awesome. Um, and do you have any upcoming events for for break the silence right now? Right now we do, we do not. Right now we're just working well, on the our grand opening rehab. coming up, but other than that, yeah. right? Other than the grand opening, I'm gonna invite you guys. Yeah, I need your I, positive vibes over there. Absolutely, I'm actually looking for someone on Facebook that has uh, I can't remember his name, um, but he wants to open up kind of like a hotel for the homeless. So as you're talking about, we're talking about um, housing. I'm like, oh, he's a contractor, a construct a construction contractor. He does a lot of flips, but he wants to get into like he wants to uh, purchase a motel to convert it uh, for homeless people or use um, some of the rooms for to house homeless um, or you know, I guess any other. But I was just thinking about like that would be such a, a nice, you know, like connection with them because he definitely wants to do that. And there's always a need. There's always a new a need for it. And I love that. I mean, coming across with people that, you know, you, you know, kind of like the love purse, like you don't want to just give someone something like here, you know, mm-hmm. like you actually want to make a person feel like a human, Exactly. Like a, you know, give that, give that back to them. Because sometimes even when you go through, you know, like mental health is one of the biggest things uh, in domestic violence right now, too, because everybody's mental state of mind is, is different, you know, and it's right. all over the place right now. And it's a great time for everybody to kind of like focus on themselves, but also um, re- once you get there, right to that good place, mm-hmm. remember that there's someone else out there that needs your help in getting right. to that place. So g- being able to give them that place, that state of mind, but also a space, a real space, tools. yeah, tools, yeah, information. And you know, I'm part of this um, church group too in Pilsen. Um, Providence of God, they have a food kitchen and they don't just, you know, I was so surprised because they don't just do like sandwiches, I, the, which is my thought that, I just thought that that's what you do, right? But there's a group of people that get together every Tuesday, they make home cooked meals. So mm. when people eat, it's like you're eating at home. You're not just eating That's beautiful. Anything. It's a group of people that, that just help out and provide food. Yes. That's pretty cool, yeah. Nothing like a good home cooked meal and I agree with what you said. I mean, that's why, like, when I interact with people anywhere from the store to wherever, I was trying to acknowledge them and give them just, like, the acknowledgement of basic human dignity. Like, I understand you're another human being and you're working. And sometimes people are having a bad day. I try to distract them for that, you know, from that for a little while. And so, yeah, acknowledging people is just another human being traveling through this yeah. magic uh, I love that, that we're on, you know? 
I, I honestly like love that because you you definitely need to uh, give your little touch anytime you give someone give it with intention so I love that and I feel like anyone going through any 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 uh, adversity in their life like those little touches you know if you're distracting someone like always be conscious and aware that everyone can be fighting their own little fight and may not you know, wear it on their sleeves. There's some people that you can notice when they're off and there's a lot of people that kind of fake it. <laughs> yeah. Well, people need acknowledgement, like eye contact, eye contact, saying something to somebody, acknowledging who they are. Like the one day I'm over at the grocery store and I see the two dudes and they're pushing carts, right? It's like, you know, hello, how are you? Happy Saturday, blah, blah, blah. And right away they responded back, you know? But you can pass right by those people or you can say something. It doesn't really take that much for me to say something, you know, like barely any energy for my mental arsenal has been spent for the day. You know, in fact, I probably refilled my cup a little bit if they laugh or if they fucking smile right. or they say something funny or I say something funny, whatever. It's all good. My point is just, yeah, people need acknowledgement. You know, they need that connection that you that somebody else cares about them. Like, you know what I mean? They might have it bad at home and then they're at work and they're dealing with the constant stress and, you know, sensory overload that we deal with in large cities plus, you know, social media and cell phones and all that nowadays is just a, you know, just that quick moment of validation or acknowledgement where they just feel like somebody actually thought enough about me to say hello and make that connection because they might be sorely hurting for just some, uh, you know, person-to-person interaction. Right. But yeah, giving everybody, giving that extra love or just putting love into the things that you do. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a sasson. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> Sprinkle you know, it with love. Sasson. Sprinkle it with love, sasson. <laughs> the best seasoning. The love, yeah. <laughs> well, um, yeah, no, because, um, you know, you mentioned like, um, you know, helping people out is you got to help yourself first, too. You got to be in a strong position to, to, to make strong moves and make somebody else strong, you know. That's very true. That's actually very, very true. Like, no solamente quédate allí. Like, keep moving up because you could be that uh, that uh, start for someone else. You could be that hand that's lending. I That's one thing that I was taught in uh, the house, high school that I went to is, like, reach one, teach one, and duplicate it. Continue to do it. And your struggles, by documenting your struggles, it could be the beginning for someone else, you know? Yeah, a lot of paths to good things, is it all starts with a story, you know? People right. need to know that somebody else went through it, that they felt that pain, but they were able to make that change, and then you're going to you're gonna be there to help them do it too. I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so simple, you know, like when we get down to the basic forms of helping people, you know, um, it all starts on like a really – human human level of dignity and respect and kindness you know? healing healing forgiveness forgiveness forgiving others for what they've done to you but also forgiving yourself for allowing it i think that's where i got hung up <laughs> a little bit was forgiving myself not so much my ex you know i it was more so myself for like being so fucking naive mm-hmm. a naiveness like fuck if i was more experienced in life maybe i wouldn't have whatever it is what it is and it's like cutting ties with that it was part of your journey um and don't look at it so bitter you know sometimes we go through shit like i i look at it and i'm like you know i i don't have that resentment anymore sure it's annoying when i have to go through it now uh the bickering and the stalking the cyber stalking and all that stupid shit that's another thing that you have to be well aware like when you make those leaps of faith it's not going to be easy all the time but just know that you're on the right path you know by right. honoring yourself most Im- most importantly is honoring yourself and if it doesn't jive it doesn't matter that you were raised in a catholic you know like a lot of latinas are raised that you have to stay with the father of your kids because you don't want to be that one that has different baby daddies and da 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 it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you have three or five baby daddies what matters is like how are you feeling are you okay with what's going on if it's not take a self-evaluation like this no longer aligns with me or the religious you know my religion that I'm practicing at the time but is it am I suffering are my kids suffering because Mm -hmm. they keep seeing me unhappy you know and I, I feel like people need to know that like 
as a victim, you know, you have your self doubts and you have your insecurities and you just feel bad about yourself when you think like you're not smart enough to have seen these things coming. But I don't think you can ever feel bad about being the victim of somebody who had a plan or is an intentionally trying to manipulate you um, on all sorts of levels. But of course, emotionally, yes. you got to master the mind before you can really make somebody do yes. what you want them to do. So I don't know that anybody out there should feel bad about that. Believe me, I've, I've had times in my life like, why didn't I handle that better? Why didn't I see that coming or, you know, whatever. And it's just like you're living your life, but somebody else has some shitty plan out there for you, and then they bring it to you. And it's like mm -hmm. you learn what to watch out for better, and you just got to – it hurts, right, when you feel like I wasn't smart or I was dumb or I wasn't enough in that situation. And I see where that, that doubt would come from. But you can never – I don't think you can ever feel bad when somebody else had ill intentions and they manipulated you. you got to – you got to look at that for they're, they're, they're a bad person or they yes. have a yeah they have a, they have mental <laughs> problems and that's that's on them but for yeah i hope the any victims out there of abuse or manipulation realize that you just um got to be strong and focus like you say on yourself and getting yourself to a point where you can you're in control of yourself and your emotions because once you're in control of that nobody else can control those things right. unless you let them because you got to realize that it's a it's a it's um a lot of times, I mean, you're living proof that you don't need somebody else. You can survive on your own. You can thrive on your own. Right. You can be creative on your own. You you can be better on your own than, than somebody else. In fact, oh, yeah. if they're coming to you now, it's usually mm -hmm. they need something from you. You don't need shit from them. That's true. That goes for the person on the street coming up to you to ask you something to, to somebody from your past or whoever, you know, family, whatever. It's like they're coming to you. Usually they need something from you. So they better fucking come correct when they do it, in my opinion. No, no. And that's right because that's one of the forms of uh, abuse is like um say you i i like to go to church on sundays right and someone knows right your your significant other oh, that's they why they get with you that's why they get that with you shit. because like, they know god wants you know that was one that's thing what you go to a church for huh yeah huh? huh you didn't learn that you're supposed to stay with your husband put up with everything you're supposed to and they know that you're the type of person that wants to be loyal that is mm -hmm. loyal Right, and they just like they they mess up and mess up and mess up because they know that you're gonna stay there anyway. Right, but no, it and doesn't you have to be that way. And you don't have to be resentful either of your religion if that's something that jives with you. That's good, but you have to be conscious that priests are not married, and to involve a priest into your one minute for me, you guys keep on going. Okay. <laughs> um, so it's really important to understand like your when you're having like marital uh, counseling, if it's from a priest, it's like, dude, that's, they're gonna choose unity until death do you apart mm -hmm. <laughs> over anything. Yeah. <laughs> and they're very good at, you know, reeling it back in and throwing all these scriptures at you. And you have to, I feel like for myself, it was like when you're in a bad situation, you're constantly, um, walking on eggshells and you can't even focus on anything else but trying to appease that other person and once you become grounded and you're secure in yourself they're gonna knock you down a few times that's okay but you start learning how to get up quickly yes. like your responses are a lot quicker once you're out of that relationship um which is you know kind of crazy because even the process to deciding Mm -hmm. to leave a situation it's a process it is a process so when people ask why didn't you leave then why didn't you know that is like the worst That's question exactly <laughs> like are you kidding. fucking kidding <laughs> I, I was looking I, for a little support and encouragement here yeah <laughs> and sometimes you won't get that from family you won't get that from your parents and you have to be okay with that you have to be okay that when you honor yourself you may be honoring and you may be taking a leap of faith and just yourself you yourself and your children and that's that's that and and you sometimes you have to cut family members off like this is what i'm going through and you gotta have a, that stern talk with everyone like i'm going through this i'm not asking for your opinions this is mm -hmm. what i'm doing you're either going to support me or you're not right now i don't need a hundred million questions right i need to get the fuck out and that's it like i <laughs> you see that just takes me back to thinking <laughs> about all these things like you know you're or it's sometimes even the way that you heal or when you heal, it's like people won't know what phase you're in, mm -hmm. in, in your process or in your journey. Right. And, you know, it's okay if you get, there's going to be times, you got to know that there's going to be times that you're going to feel alone. Yeah. Uh, and, and you're going to be sad and 
you're just thinking, like you said earlier, right? Like, oh my God, did I make a right decision? But, but it's like, you know what? You, you just got to do it. You got to do it. Like I remember going back and saying, you know, you know, I love my sisters, you know, I'm the oldest of five. So obviously they always look to me for, you know, for, advice, for guidance yeah. and advice and stuff. And now they're looking at me like, I'm, I'm I look like I'm crazy. Right. <laughs> yeah. They're like, what, what are you doing? This is not what you do. This is not what you said. This is not what you were teaching us. I'm like, I, I know, but once I get through this, I'll let you guys know. So I had to like kind of step back. I had to let go of a lot of people that there's a lot of other people that could be toxic in your life. Yes. You know, uh, and so you just got to go through that thing. You so gotta purge, you got to purge. Uh, I would say, like, detach yourself from the other party's family. Block everybody. If you have mutual friends, block those motherfuckers as well because you don't need to be in (laughs) communication with the shit that you left behind. Like, it's behind you for a reason, but I feel like sometimes when you're a victim and you don't think clearly, you want to, like, start over explaining yourself. You don't have to explain yourself to nobody. Yes. Honor yourself. Like, one thing I do with all of my mentees, it's like, what how do you feel about it mm-hmm. and when the when the the conversation starts but i'm worried about such and such thinking or my mom you yourself like let's connect with your divine feminine is that what you see or start off with if none of this was a fucking issue how would you see yourself yes how would you see yourself it's always happy you know all these amazing things and when the conversation starts derailing or attaching to other people it's like but is that part of your higher self or is that part of a low vibing part of who you are right now? It's part of my, okay, we got to remove that because mm-hmm. you can't get to this unless you start, you know, cutting people off. Yeah. Because people always Toxic. Like, have a picture of who they want to be, mm-hmm. you know, and that may have started when they were younger or it might be what they want to be now. But if you're not doing that because of a relationship or relationship problems, like if you can eliminate that out, like you can finally get like what you really need for yourself because that relationship might've been right at one point or you might've been in love at one point and that changes and that's kind of how life works in the modern era. And so it is what it is, you know, and it's, it's too short to be stuck, you know, like settling for less when you know you're better, right? I mean, exactly. Right. We're all successful people here in this room. I don't think we'd be talking if we weren't, you know, and, Right. If you can eliminate distractions and really focus on that, like people should want to be with you because of what you're doing and to support you in what you're doing, not to drag you away from it. Right. right. Oh my God. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? That is so important. We we're just having this conversation yesterday with a couple of people about the importance of uh, of knowing uh, what your significant other is doing and supporting because that could go both ways you know oh, female yeah. and you're yeah. either a power couple or you're in each other's way you're one or the other but you can't no. be both no no way <laughs> so it's definitely very important when you do uh, i forgot to mention do not start dating right away after a breakup do not <laughs> replace the cacas with another shithead because it's just not good it's, for yourself yeah it's not good for yourself and either you will get a good person and you're just projecting and dumping on that person but ultimately you're not going to be a well-rounded version of yourself if you keep uh making your making other people make you happy like that is not true happiness like you have to be content happy with yourself before you start venturing you gotta know out. yourself yeah who are you now what do you want now well what? the thing is like why would you put yourself through hell okay because that's horror it's a horrible process to go into something that's the same thing sometimes your point your friends will influence you like no you just got to get them out of your system that is the worst (laughs) idea ever like just just go on other dates and just no 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 (laughs) that's the worst (laughs) shit you could do well yeah i mean because what what is a relationship right and especially when you first start dating somebody you're trying to put your best foot forward. You're trying to make a good impression. You're trying to, you know, find the things you have in common. You're trying to kind of cater to that person to see, you know, if you're going to solidify something. And that all takes time. But for sure as hell, I think you need to know yourself, where you're at in your life, and what you want going forward before you get involved with somebody else. And, mm-hmm. and there's many ways that relationships can be successful once you're in them. Each person could be in the same field, so they already kind of know what's going on. And they both support each other in that. One person could be in a completely different field, and that's great. They do their own thing. They have their own passion. You have yours. 
but in the end of the day, I feel the best relationships are ones of mutual support yeah. and one where you might not have all the same goals, but you help each other with those goals no matter what. Right. And, they, you know, that goes back to, like, what we're even taught about relationships, you know, when we're younger. Like, I would always think, like, no, like, if the next boyfriend has to be, like, I have to be, like, I mean, like, if I were married to, like, the next person, it's, like, right. it's not like that. Because, but also, that goes on to your culture. Like, you're not allowed to, you know, to date, Mm-hmm. It's like Variety. you know you no you have a boyfriend like they they think that that's the person you're gonna marry, marry yeah. you know and then we have to that's why it's important to teach our our children to to date you know like dating is collecting data of the other person I'm such a like <laughs> it's collecting data about a lot of things <laughs> yeah. yourself the other person how relationships work what you like and what you yeah. Don't. Like it's really, a trial and error. You got to try a few before you really get locked on, right? So what I what I did with my last relationship, this is gonna sound, this is gonna sound <laughs> horrible. Not my my marriage. <laughs> I had to do. I did a list of like assets and liability, and if your liabilities list is longer than what value he brings to the table, you should. Just get rid of it, but also do that with people that you're dating. Like, okay, this is where we're at. Like, are you going to be potentially an asset, a power couple asset, Mm -hmm. or are you going to be another fucking liability that I need to take care of? And it's like, bro, if you're not healed, I don't even want to talk to you. Like, if we're talking about the ex toxica, you're toxic. (laughs) (laughs) You're still there. (laughs) You're still still there, Baba. (laughs) See you later. You need another year or so. <laughs> so I do that with friends, too. Like, are you an asset or a liability? Because friends can also influence, you know, and derail you from your dreams and aspirations. Some friends don't want to go anywhere in life. They're content with the job. And while you have other friends who have larger aspirations and want to do, you know, and are open and receptive to different ideas and ventures, you want to stay with that. You want... You become the medium of the five people you hang out the most with. And if you take that inventory and you do that list, <laughs> that will tell you if you're in the right circle. Yeah, and be careful because sometimes you can have uh, friends that, you know, you have you have some people that are, that are just hold on to grudges, right? Like if you've had oh, a yeah. bad relationship and then you become better, you're going to be upset. You're not, you're, not you're, oh, you're mad at the whole world. You hate man, you know, and you don't want to listen to none of that. I've been there. <clears throat> but, I admit. <laughs> but you got to bring yeah. it back and understand that, you know, in the relationship that you had, what were the choices that you made that got you to that relationship? And mm-hmm. why did you stay so long in that relationship? So that when you go on to your next real relationship, yeah. or when God gives you that person that's meant to be in your life, you know, you also know how to treat them as well. Because, right. uh, you know, you don't want to look at another person uh, like, oh, no, well, you know, well, my career is better than yours, so, you know, you have to, you know, I go first in everything, you know, classes or whatever you got to do. Balance. It has to be a balance. You also... And don't get into a habit of collecting red flags, like <laughs> like you're a motherfucking collection agency. Like you're going through a, a <laughs> child of red flag. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? You're doing this again wrong. <laughs> you know? Well, I think Tulsa and I were chatting about um, you know, partners or significant others or whatever who want to know where you're at and what you're doing at all times. That's fucking weird. Like, my wife and I, like, show up work or whatever, I'm not texting her every five minutes about, like, what the fuck she's doing at that minute. I mean, if she's at work, my guess would be she's, like, opening beers, serving them to, like, customers or something like that. I kind of get what's going on. I don't need to be in fucking touch all the time. Yeah. I got shit I got to focus on. Mm-hmm. It's so weird when people are obsessed with somebody when they're not there. Somebody oh, yeah. Knows. They will keep you busy. A narcissist will keep you busy 24-7. Like, what are you doing now? Why didn't you respond? I'm taking a shit. You know, like, <laughs> what do, you mean? Yeah. do you need a fucking picture? <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Like, come on. Just the words alone already give me the picture. Of, you know what I mean? <laughs> Start saying that. Shout out to my Toxico. He's the biggest fan. <laughs> he's actually, he's my ex Toxico. <laughs> he's my biggest fan, though. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. Like, the people have that kind of energy that so long later. It's like, I just been over for a long time. Didn't you move on? Yeah, well, that's because you don't take the time to work on yourself and to and to forgive because you keep on trying to 
you know, figure out why something didn't work. And sometimes mm-hmm. you don't, you know, you're trying to figure it out. Like, no, why with me? Why with me? He wasn't able to work it out. And then you see them move on, right? You see them move on to Oh, they on move on quickly. They move and then on you're quickly. like, oh, wait a minute. I, I thought that you didn't have money. But now you're living downtown, doing all this stuff, you know? And it's kind of like, oh, okay. And then you, you get into this mode, but it's kind of like, no, 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 no. You already knew that. You just didn't want to accept it. Exactly. Sometimes when a when a person starts disrespecting you, in you know, you already know what place you have in their life and in their heart, you know. So if you can't fix it, then you gotta let it go until you can, you know, until you can no more. Because at the end of the day, you're allowing them to hurt you. They're not hurting you anymore. At some point, you're the one that's allowing mm-hmm. this to happen. So you you need to talk to yourself and tell yourself that you love yourself enough to give you the opportunity to just be happy, be right. happy your life, even if it's not with them. Yeah, like always choose yourself. Always fill your cup first in the morning. I like to meditate in the morning before I get anything started. And my kids kind of know, like, they're like, damn, did you meditate today? They're like, just take the next 15 minutes, Ma, to meditate. We'll, we'll handle it from here. But it's really important to like shower yourself with love. Take yourself on a date, you know, take your, I, I love taking goddess baths. Like I just have my crystals, my candles, my affirmations. Sometimes I have to write a little bit cause I'm feeling some type of way insecure or not enough. Um, and you just have to like pour into yourself, stop pouring into others, pour into yourself. Yeah. Like knock that out of pouring into everyone <laughs> else or like <laughs> give yourself the bow bows. <laughs> Well, the rest of life seems a lot easier if you do take care of yourself first. It like, really does. All the problems, you know, if you, you're sleeping right, exercising right, you know, eating right. You don't have time for, for nonsense. You really don't. And, and doing w- meditation and stuff. Like, yeah. yeah, you just, you're so much more focused. Like, I, I realized I was having these weird headaches for a long time, and they didn't feel good. They felt pretty bad. Like, I was going to have a stroke or something. It was like a pulsating headache. Like, Jesus Christ, it should hurt real bad. And I think once I got... Like my breathing, right? That that pretty much went away. I really don't experience it much anymore, even under stress conditions. Because like Sandra knows very well how stressful this shit is, right? Mm-hmm. You don't get rich by doing you know one deal a year in real estate, mm-hmm. and that's really true for the attorneys because we charge low flat, flat rates or whatever. And so, you know, I'd be stressing on that, and I realized like, man, I'm taking shell brass right now. I'm holding that for a while, and the carbon buildup is what causes a lot of the stress. So you need to. Refresh that with some oxygen. And once I got my breathing down right, like, I've been a lot less stress-free. I manage things so much better. I listen to what's going around me more. And so that's helped me a lot. But, yeah, if you can get I to agree. that stage, it really does That's help. interesting. I just, I, I was just saying, uh, I was telling Pedro um, during last week, I'm like, you know what? I, I think <laughs> it's going to sound dumb, but I think I don't breathe right. Like, I don't really Most inhale. Most people don't. You're right. Most people don't. Like, do I hold my breath in? Eighty-five percent of the people do not breathe correctly. I learned that at a Wim Hof. Have you heard of Wim Hof method? No. Ice man. I think I've heard of that. So it's uh, he's more into like breathing, like. But then you, he's the one that dips himself in the cold water. Yes, yes. I recommend that to everyone, like taking a seminar for that, um, because it really help. First of all, you learn how to breathe, and you feel winded once you start breathing correctly. You inhale. You fill your belly up with air. I call it pregnant belly. And then you let it go. And you keep doing I think that. I just got a cramp. <laughs> yeah, because you're not used to, we're not used to like breathing correctly. So you do that and then let it go. And then breathe it. Pregnant belly. And then you start getting. Well, you don't have to do pregnant belly all the time. I'd rather not call it pregnant belly. That's so scary. (laughs) Abundance belly, okay? Uh, Okay. uh, Yeah, abundance. We got a lot of abundance in America. (laughs) I know I've been having a little too much abundance, but I'm making the changes day by day. Um, But, yeah, no, it it does help. Yeah, you you start wondering about that if you're breathing correctly or not, and I noticed that in many situations for years I wasn't breathing correctly, you know? And then your anxiety kicks off when you're not breathing. You don't have exactly. enough oxygen. It, 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 it in multiplies you. worse and worse and worse. And the problems seem heavier when you deal with them. But if you're breathing right, you take a step back more because you're focusing on that breath. Because you're grounded. And then the whole rest of your body, the systems are all like working smoothly, like they're not yeah. processing a lot. 
You're like, your you chakras are you start, all aligned. You start thinking outside of the box. You start solving problems better. You don't feel as stressed. But how, how is it that we forget how to breathe, though? We because were never taught. Nobody ever taught us properly in the first <laughs> place. So said. they taught us how to walk, but they didn't teach us how to breathe. No. Well, we kind of learned these things naturally, but like you come out of the body and you have an auto, or you have a like a central nervous system that forces you to breathe, but it doesn't tell you how to like do it properly to right. alleviate stress. Just it'll, enough. You know, do enough to keep you alive. Yeah. But it doesn't tell you like. And, and that's you know that's the thing that I think we we here at this table and our teachers and our curriculum need to reflect like breathing properly, meditation, conflict resolution, combat. You know things that they're not teaching people. They need to be comfortable with these things. You know these uncomfortable things. And mastering the breathing is one of the biggest things to mastering your emotions and your thought and your clarity and your focus. Once you get that, a lot of the other stuff falls into place much easier. And the reason I like yoga is because like talking about being comfortable with the uncomfortable is like mm. when you're in some of these positions and you're holding the instructor will remind you are you breathing right now for you should be and then if if you are are you breathing properly are you kind of holding your breath for a long time or breathing naturally in and out just feeling the strain in the position once mm -hmm. you can get comfortable with strain that's the uncomfortable right nobody likes to be strained out but if you can breathe and remain calm from that you just you're aware of the sensation but you don't let it dictate your next action you can kind of step back more yeah. And make a, a non-emotional decision and then make that decision calmly. With the, I with feel like breathing. that's really important for uh, victims or anyone in their healing uh, journey. You don't even have to be a victim. If you're trying to be a better version of yourself, mm -hmm. breathing is really important. Being one with the divine. Learning how to be with yourself. By yourself. With you know, peace. With peace. Without having the need to, like, the FOMO, like, missing in action, you know, all that. Fear of missing out. Oh, there you go. Fear of missing out. Oh, wow. um. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yesterday at the women's event that we had, someone was talking about, like, when you're pretending to be somebody that you're not. Mm -hmm. I, I forgot what they, there's a term, a term for that. But you have a fear, like, for people to find out for real. Like, if they look at you like you're a successful person, and for people to find out I that, that you're fear. not perfect... For, for sure. I had that. Like, I was, like, looked upon as, like, uh, I always have things going on for myself. Or I was always lucky. Like, everyone would always say, like, girl, you're lucky. You're a team mom. You have a great job. And I'm like, well, my job is only my baseline. It's like my aspirations are something else. But this is just my baseline. And everyone still to this day, they're like, man, you're so lucky. No, you don't work seven days a week like I do. Uh -huh. The fuck am I lucky? <laughs> I didn't get a million dollars just dropped off from the sky. But it's true. I mean, honestly, like, to identify, like, it took me a long time to kind of admit that I had a problem at home and I wasn't okay with it. Like once I realized, I literally was in counseling two to three times a week for a whole year, thinking that I was the problem, that I needed to learn how to, to endure more. Like literally that's what I went to counseling and it turned out to be something completely different. Like, well, why do you think that? I'm like, well, that's what, you know, going to church taught me. Like, you know, I want to make sure my kids have, you know, two parents in the household that I want to be a single mom. Well, what would happen if you were a single happy mom? I'm like, well, I didn't think about that. Well, let's start drawing from there. Mm -hmm. You're a single mom. Why? Well, I, I don't know if I could be successful. Really? How come? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, when you start asking those questions, you're like, <laughs> you know what? You're fucking right. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and then putting it into action. Cause you can, well, you gotta have a vision. You know, you yeah. have, to have a vision, like a powerful vision of what you want and what your future is. But it takes someone, honestly. You got to see the invisible. It's not there. People get caught up on what's in front of them in these dark places. Right. But they, when there is not light, you have to be able to make your own light. And you mentioned, you know, about being peaceful with yourself. There's some saying, and I don't know who this quote is by, but it says like the the roots or the cause of most of the problems are mankind of mankind are people's inability to be able to sit peacefully in a place on their own for like more than 30 or like 30 minutes or more. Yeah. If you yeah. could just sit there and just, you know, you could be worried about how long is this going to fucking doctor's appointment going to take or how many people are ahead of me and you're sitting oh, there freaking you're... out. Well, cause you're thinking mm -hmm. of the next thing you got to do, which is a, we fall victim of that all the time in America just because it's a very work focused, you know, product. Thing. Yeah. Productivity. It, it's gotten even worse with technology because you know, shift work and other things are made easier by all of this. And so people, you know, it is what it is. But the point is just, if you can just 
focus present. on the moment. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes. Present um, mindfulness and 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 a focus, mastering your breath really helps with the mindfulness of that to like to really observe a moment and let like people have their moment, right? Yes. Um, you know, in a certain situation because you don't want to detract from that. You don't want to find yourself like working against the situation. You just kind of want to be like going with the flow when when you have to be the passive person in the situation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Once you get the breath part of it down, you're able to to handle that a lot better in all sorts of situations. It helps with so many things. And I mean, another thing is like being calm under all this crazy shit we have going on right now. Like you know, there's a lot of issues of police violence and stuff like that. And if they were trained how to breathe better and also trained how to like engage in hand to hand combat more they would be more comfortable with it instead of like right away reaching for a weapon and things like that. And they say that, you know, they probably need about 20% of the time that they're on duty in training and all they get is an academy and they just throw them out there and the rest is you learn trial and error for like the rest of your fucking time. And right now it's like days off are canceled and they're working overtime and they're, yeah. they're short staffed in the city of Chicago. They're down like if they, if they admitted it, probably about a thousand officers but they're saying like five six hundred or something like that but it's probably double that and their current officers are just getting slammed but but if they were taught you know mastering breathing co- uh, you know and then having time to get counseling after their shifts and stuff which they that definitely counseling need. is honestly yeah. i feel like everyone should have an appointment if you're getting into a relationship getting married like open it up with therapy mm-hmm. maybe not something that you're going to be doing all the time but just open it up for your significant other and be like hey you know we need to just start this or just even for yourself maybe you need to do some maintenance later on i would always highly encourage like always have your therapist if you can afford one if not you need to find a really really good friend that isn't biased (laughs) (laughs) which is very hard it's very very hard no we brought you know like we brought that up like now um you know, when we got engaged, I'm like, the first thing we got to do, because I know that me, me, I, you know, there's certain things that I want to make sure that I take care of, like, not just right now, but even down the future, but because I remember the uh, one of the last things that kind of, like, stayed in my mind was when I was told who, you know, like, just, you know, just remember that you have an attitude, Sandra. Nobody's going to want you with that attitude. So then well, I I'm think like, that makes you more attractive, personally. <laughs> but, uh, but, but but yeah, that's yeah. What, what is and that? And then I'm about? like, yeah. so then I'm like, <laughs> so with you know, yeah. like with my fiance, you know, I'm like, you know, when you know, so I'm just like doing attitude on purpose. Like, you're fine, don't want me. You don't have an attitude. <laughs> He's you're like, you're assertive. passionate. You're passionate. passionate yes, yes. That's the more you see, way to look at marry it. the guy who can <laughs> use the negative that you said, and he flips it into a positive. He's right. You're passionate. <laughs> and that was a struggle. I'm like, no, but I have an attitude. What do you want me for? You know. He's like. Like you're, you're a good person. You're gonna like be just. You're fine. You're perfect for the right person. That's for right. the wrong person, there's gonna be a shit list of things that that are wrong with you. My ex would say to me like, "No one's gonna want you with seven kids." Oh really? You want to see my DMs? <laughs> yeah, you got the friggin' dads of the year coming out of the woodwork all of a sudden. Like, oh girl, you fine like a motherfucker. Oh, you got seven kids. I'm an awesome guy. Like, I'm an awesome. <laughs> I like sports. What kind of sports do your kids like? I'm like, they're actually in everything. Well, I can always help you <laughs> with their games in the afternoon. They're willing to help. <laughs> you know, if you're no, like, I this have... is what you used to do, but I, I got people willing to do that. They're just telling me right in my DMs. Like, I'm not even advertising <laughs> you know, this like, shit. You know, I'm just. <laughs> I was in a, a <laughs> short relationship, and he's like, well, I don't mind putting up a house and having a seven bedrooms, but can I This motherfucker me? says, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs in <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> he's going to build you a house with seven rooms? This is like a Drake song, god damn it. He's like, I just need to adopt the kids. Would your ex be willing to sign over uh, your children, give up his parental rights? I'm like, what? Wait, what? Excuse me? Like, it was too extreme for me. I'm like, I'm not even ready for this. This is weird. Why are you trying to do all this? Yeah, I want to adopt your children. What? Why, motherfucker? Why do you want to do it right away? <laughs> like, we didn't even get the home run in yet. You're talking about adopted kids. Yeah, but it, it's so just wherever funny. you're going on the first day. <laughs> it wasn't. It, no, mm. we were. We were <laughs> Delicious pizza. <laughs> <laughs> home run. <laughs> they hit a home run. Man. But just pizza. know that there's someone out there for you, ladies. Doesn't matter how many children you have. <laughs> or attitudes. 
the right person, the perfect person for you will see all of that and still love you for you. For you. That's the best feeling. Yeah. Divine wedding yourself. vows in the motherfucking Divine vibe. wedding vows. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yeah. But yeah. Service with a smile. Always. Yeah. And with love. Anything else um, that we need to know? We got. We know that Break the Silence has their grand opening coming up, most likely May, but we'll be flexible because shit happens in life. But uh, that's the goal <laughs> is to be open. Yeah, was, we were having uh, the goal to be in April, but um, I don't know. It might happen. It might happen um, sooner, but I'm thinking end of May. Also, we'll be having our second annual Break the Silence Walk. We're looking forward to that. And then we'll be focusing on having our Purple Gala in October nice. for Domestic Violence a Month. So stay tuned. Good things coming up. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Looking forward to, uh, you know, just being part of, you know, there's so many people out there uh, that do great stuff. You know, we have a lot of unsung heroes out there in the communities. So, um, but we're we're here um, to support any other organization to collaborate with anybody else that is in the purpose of doing good for other people. I think just doing the podcast with you guys together is is a start of that too. Like I think Absolutely. every guests meet each other. Like Tilsa and Kimmy are already working on stuff. You'll meet Kimmy at some point. Really nice. So uh, she's amazing. Lady. I love Kimmy. She's such an amazing soul. But, but like. All you guys are amazing. You combine that all together, yeah. like support for each other's events, speakers at each other's events, yes. um, helping out, helping to spread the word, raising money, helping people out. I think that we need that more now at this time and in our lives and this country's history than ever before. Yes. We yeah, I that. agree. Like the change isn't, you can't control if it's Biden or Trump or fucking Putin and Ukraine. It is, it's happening at this point. Now we're reacting to it. We're observing this stuff. But we can we can change our interactions with other people and within our community and build good things and, and be good to each other and just that's that's it and it's contagious as fuck too. You start doing it, it and then somebody else is like, well, we can do that too. And now mm -hmm. we have all these resources and um, so I guess we it's just gotta true. really stick together collectively on the local level to to make life good for each other. It's awesome that you guys are doing this. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity to speak about break the silence and. Man. Yeah, great, like, friendships here. Yeah, I love <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, exchange information and connect with each other um, before you guys leave. And, uh, you know, it's awesome. We, You let me know um, about the upcoming events. I'll be at the grand opening. I don't mind donating. I, I've donated. My cousin is uh, doing some veterans charity work now. I just donated to his cause. And um, it all comes back to you, you know, when you're, when you're good, you just kind of, like, float on the wave of the universe it's like the universe just gives you that surfboard Absolutely. just like ride it out yeah and sometimes so, it's like not even just money that you can time, you know donate it's just speeches panels at the thing whatever. right yeah anything any any type of support is always um appreciated and never looked down on you know because some people are like i don't know what to do man just just come and support that's yeah. all we need you know yeah it's it's good thoughts and good actions right and you don't have to be like you know, if you don't have money, perhaps you volunteer. If right. you don't have time, perhaps you donate some money or you, you know, come to the event and bring some extra stuff and some donations. Like, you know, it's, there's a lot of ways to do it. Yeah, especially like now, you know, with social media, you know, go on uh, Facebook, like our page, we're on uh, Instagram also. And then you can just share some of the information that we're going to be putting up there, you know, and feel free to just reach out whenever, uh, even when you're stuck. Um, somewhere you know of someone and you know you don't want you know to bring them directly but you just want to talk about it you know we're we're more than happy to to be there nice well said well on that note um this is something i say at the end of every podcast and uh you know i added a little twist on top of it recently COVID is contagious but so is happiness, motherfuckers. <laughs> so <It's true. laughs> I've gotten along with many different people of many different races and genders and all this throughout my life, just starting from a position of kindness and respect. And, um, you know, it's, it's free to be kind and, and, you know, try to make people laugh and it's all contagious. And sometimes that, that little, that little thing changes somebody for a moment that's much needed or, 
you know, it helps them carry it into the rest of their day too. So um, be good to each other out there, you know, be good to yourself, be good to your family, be good to your community, good people make other people good. So be good y'all and uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Keep in touch uh, with with uh, our guests here and keep uh, updated on what's going on and tune in next time. Boss Life University Podcast. We love you. Bye. Peace. Peace out. My ears hurt now. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize. <laughs>